What's up guys? Welcome to Blackie Cool. I'm your host, Gershon, and today I got a review of Detective Pikachu. I finally saw it. Um gonna give you my thoughts, uh, how I think the movie would, and did it succeed as a video game movie. So let's just first off the bat, um it's an okay movie. It's an okay movie. It's a very bad Pokemon movie, unfortunately. Does that mean if you know Pokemon, this makes sense to you to an extent? Um, as a as just a regular movie, it's okay. But it feels like they had a regular movie, and then somebody was like, "Hey, we got this Pokemon property. Let's do something with it." And then it was like, "You know what? Yeah, we should." And just threw Pokemon into this movie that has already been written. Just rewrote a couple things to involve the Pokemon. It's it doesn't feel like it has the heart of Pokemon. Like, most of Pokemon movies understand it's about friendship. Um, those two people, the Pokemon and Pokemon trainer, going through an adventure, understanding their world, discovering new things together. They understand that. This movie, it does it in a different way that if it wasn't a Pokemon movie... It wouldn't matter. Like, I'm, I'm probably phrasing this terribly. It does something that other movies do, but it doesn't set itself apart being a Pokemon movie doing it, if that makes sense to you. Um, yeah. Justice Smith is good. He's a decent actor, believable in scenes, the whole, um, uh, kind of don't want to be a trainer feel he throws out there. It works. It's good. Um, I mean, I don't know. He's okay actor to me. I don't think he's great by any means, but that's just my opinion. That's just on me. Um, Ryan Reynolds' is Pikachu voice. It's good. It, you, you, I, I, me, myself, I jump back and forth between going, oh, that's Ryan Reynolds playing Pikachu, to all oh, this Deadpool playing Pikachu, or oh, it's Ryan Reynolds playing Pikachu. So it it's, his voice works for these types of things, but the more he does it, the more you kind of home in on him being one voice, and you remember for that one thing, you're just amazed that he's in it. That's just how I feel anyway. Um, it, I wish, it felt it could have been better. It felt it was rushed. It felt that they threw some stuff together. They clearly semi copied the animated first Pokemon movie, but then changed some stuff and twisted some stuff around, especially with the P a Detective Pikachu angle. They changed that around, um, changed things in there, which it wasn't a change for the better. Like, I really wanted this to be really good. Um, I really did. The twist that they have in there, it's it's good, but if you're paying attention throughout the movie, and if you're one of those people that kind of tries to figure out where the movie's going before it gets there, you'll figure it out. There was one twist that I am upset that I didn't realize it, but when they showed me, I was like, oh my god, why did I realize that? That one might not be so easy to figure out, because you're going just thinking that won't happen necessarily, so that sucks in itself. But it's a good twist, though. Not honestly, it's not that great of a twist. It's a it's a cute twist, but nothing mind blowing. Um, let's talk a little bit about the Pokemon. There's a lot of Pokemon, but for some reason they didn't seem to look as good as they did in the trailers. I don't know. I don't know if it was just me. The CGI didn't look as good as it did in the trailers. The po I mean, Pikachu looked pretty much okay. Mewtwo, which is in the trailer, so that's not a spoiler. Um, uh, he looked okay. But other Pokemon just looked like they were really just placed there. And you can tell it didn't seem like they put a lot of work into making them look real in that environment, necessarily. At least as real as they're supposed to look. Um, there's a lot of Easter eggs, like, um, cities and... I I believe there was a Nurse, Nurse Joy. I think I seen something. You know, Nurse Joy Namer in there somewhere. The references to some characters. It's just cool. But that world still doesn't feel like the Pokemon world. 
I mean, it feels like a shell of the Pokemon world. Um, it just didn't feel like what I've come to know to be the Pokemon world through the cartoons and the movies, per se. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think of some more stuff I could tell you before I start going into spoiler stuff, because... I since I took so long to see the movie, I'm gonna do a non-spoiler part of this review, and then at the end of it, I'm gonna do a spoiler part of the review, so we can talk about more of the plot points and whatnot. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's semi cute. There's good jokes. Some of them are a little close to being dirty, but still fun. Um, if my kids were into Pokemon, I would take them to it. They seem like they would have fun with it. I did see it late at night, so maybe I was tired, but I felt kind of bored through it, and it, the pacing felt a little slow at times. I don't know. that Maybe that was just me, but the pacing felt a little slow at times. I don't know. But it was good to see. Um, I wish there was somebody who said Ash. I don't remember if anybody said Ash. I might have forgot it. I might have forgot it. Um, there's not a lot of battles. I don't think that's a spoiler because you're assuming for a Pokemon movie there's going to be Pokemon battles. There's not. And that's that's very upsetting. But you can see they're trying to do a mystery thing instead of an actual Pokemon thing. They mention trainers and whatnot and gym battles per se. But you don't really see more than really one. Maybe two. Which is not a spoiler. If it is, I'm sorry, but I don't think it is. Um, it's just it. It felt like it could have been better. It really felt like it could have been better, and they dropped the ball a little bit. At least that's how I felt. But I, it felt like it could have been better. Um, people did good with what they had to work with. Um. They made you feel the world. It felt like the world was lived in, but it just didn't feel like the Pokemon world. Like, it, I don't know. It's hard to explain. It just, it didn't capture that Pokemon nostalgia you thought you would get or that Pokemon feel, at least for me. Um, I played Pokemon was on the Game Boy. Like, I'm an old school Pokemon head. I'm not still into I played Pokemon Go. I did play Pokemon Go for a while. But it just didn't feel the same. I know this is kind of a Pokemon for a new generation necessarily. But you kind of need those nostalgia people to come in <laughs> to make the money the movie needs to make. So I don't think they did that with that. But it's still, it's it's an okay movie. Um, Yeah, it's an okay movie. It's just not a great Pokemon movie. Like anything else, it'll be okay. But as a Pokemon movie, there's a there's another bar, and you gotta step it up. And I feel like they didn't step it up to that bar. Um, so that's my non spoiler review. So let's get into some spoiler things um, for Detective Pikachu. So first off, there's no Pokedex. I was very upset about that. No one pulled out a Pokedex. They had these really big phones, and I thought they were gonna do something about Pokedex, and they didn't. That's very upsetting. Um, it seems like only everybody only gets one Pokemon. Um, I don't know if it was just that everybody. Cause I know in further games they have it to where you can walk around with one Pokemon with you. I don't know if that was the case, but it seemed like people only got one Pokemon. Like I said earlier, only one Pokemon battle, which was really short, and there's other things going on. This movie is a Pokemon movie, and you only get one Pokemon battle. There's not a lot of trainers running around necessarily. Like, one of the main aspects of Pokemon is you catching Pokemon and training. Which they did do in the beginning. There's a been beginning, like right in the beginning of the movie, they show you trying to show, um, I forget the dude's name as a character. But Justice Smith's trying to catch a Pokemon and trying to catch a, uh, a Cubone. And that was cool. That was cool. But you never see that again. I don't even recall seeing anybody pulling a Pokemon out of a Pokeball. Like throwing a Pokeball and a Pokemon coming out. I don't even recall remember seeing that again. Which is very disappointing. Um, and then the fact that Pikachu 
never uses his powers until the end of the movie almost. I get it, you're saving money, but come on. Like, the, there's a big flaw to that. I guess, uh, yep, it's still a flaw. I say it's a flaw. So, the whole premise is, this one old guy is, uh, he went off to deliver the Pokemon, try to find a bigger world. I mean, try to find healing, heal sickness for the world. Comes to find out, it's just, he finds nothing, but he figures out a way to become Pokemon. He figured out a way to put people's brains into Pokemon using Mewtwo's powers. So he finds Mewtwo, he's corrupting Mewtwo to be able to use his powers. He takes control of Mewtwo through mind control. Mind you, you Mewtwo is a psychic Pokemon. You would think he'd be able to fight this, but for some reason he can't. When he takes Mewtwo's powers, I mean Mewtwo's body, he's able to use his powers. But there's a point where Mewtwo escaped the facility he was trapped in, which they were very unclear if they made Mewtwo or if they found Mewtwo and been holding him for 20 years. I was very unclear on that one. I don't know if they made Mewtwo and they held him for 20 years and he escaped or if they found Mewtwo uh, after 20 years. That was confusing. I didn't get that part. But he escapes, in his process of escaping, uh, we're going to just call him Smith. The main character just called him Smith because I forgot his name. That's, that's how unrememberable he was, for me at least. I forgot his name totally. So Smith's dad, who is played by Ryan Reynolds, there's a twist there. We're going to talk about that. Um, he helps him escape with his Pikachu, but he dies in the process of helping him escape. But then Mewtwo sees that all humans aren't bad, puts his mind into Pikachu's body. Okay, so now, but for some reason when that happens, he gets amnesia. And Pikachu doesn't know how to be Pikachu because he's Smith's dad, if that makes sense. But why when the other guy became Mewtwo, he was able to use his powers, makes no sense. So there's a little messed up thing there. Um... There was this thing with Ditto. It was really cool. They is a genetically modified Ditto, and he was able to transform into people. And he did it in front of people, and nobody was like, "Hey, whoa, whoa! When was Ditto able to do that?" Because I know Ditto was only able to turn into other Pokemon. I didn't know Ditto was able to turn into humans. And they let you know there's a genetically modified Ditto, and nobody around is like, "Hey." Why does man genetically modify in Pokemon and isn't that illegal? Is that not illegal? Because it seems like it should be illegal. That's like genetically modifying animals for your own personal use. That's illegal. Why is that not legal in this world? I'm just saying, what are the rules? <laughs> but it was cool to see Ditto transform. And that it, it, there's a point where you thought it was Team Rocket, which they don't come involved into this at all. I think the closest thing to Team Rocket is the R for the gas that makes Pokemon go wild, which helps Mewtwo be able to transfer humans, um, mental, humans' minds into Pokemons. That's the closest thing to Team Rocket, I believe, is in this, if I recall. If I, I think so. So the big twist is the big. Uh, the big old guy trying to put poke take humans into Pokemon to be able to evolve. He felt it was best for humankind for them not to be human anymore, but to be Pokemon. I don't understand that, <laughs> but okay. Um, his son, who you kind of are supposed to feel that is the villain of the movie, turns out to be against his father, but his father holds him up. Um, once again, we come back to this no Pokedex. And no Pokeball throws except one. There's only one Pokeball throw. Very irritating. Um, other than that, Pikachu doesn't use, knows how to use his powers because he's Smith's dad. And he realized he's Smith's dad, which I was, I felt very stupid that I didn't realize it a lot sooner. Uh, but then he eventually turns back into Ryan Reynolds. And I'm like, um, no, that's not your father. Even movie-wise, that's not your father. <laughs> Ryan Reynolds wouldn't be your dad. Come on. That was terrible, but that turns out to be his dad. 
stupid. But like I said before, the Pokemon didn't look as good in in the movie as they do in the trailer. Um, the CGI doesn't look as good, which is very disappointing. And sometimes it's jarring. And I don't know why that changed from the trailer to the movie. Or maybe I was just so excited for the Pokemon movie that once I saw it and the CGI started to settle in with me, I was like, this doesn't look good. I don't know. But it's still, it, it's an okay movie. It's a not good Pokemon movie, but it's an okay movie, if that makes sense to you. Once again, it's hard to describe, but it just wanted it to be better. Um, I still had fun with it. The jokes are fun. The jokes are really good. Uh, the girl that plays this reporter lady, she's all right. She's somewhat interesting, somewhat keeps you in the story. They have a little love connection thing, which Smith is awkward with it, which is that movie trope, awkward boy meets girl. Um, he does that very well. I give him that. But other than that, uh, I, I, I was a very disappointed in the movie. I'm not going to lie to you guys. I have to give it, I give it a six out of 10, honestly. And I'm being kind of generous. <laughs> like, it's not something I want to rewatch again. Because it's, it's, it wasn't fun. Like, if it was fun in a bad movie, totally fine. But it's not, it doesn't even feel fun. Like, the, the fight with Mew is okay. But then you start questioning, like, why can he use the powers and Pikachu can't use the powers? How is that working? And there's so many questions that pop up. Like, so many questions. Like, how? why couldn't Mew just take re-control of his own body? Like, oh, he's like one of the most powerful Pokemon ever. If you're telling me that this Mewtwo, which I'm still, I'm not sure if he was made by them or found by them, but isn't he one of the legendary Pokemon that can't be beat this easily? I'm just saying. Uh, that's just me. But hit me down in the comments. Let me know what you thought about the movie. Did you like it? Did you not like it? Did you have the same problems I had with it? Are you still mad there's no Pokédex in there? And there's no, who's that Pokemon? They, they didn't do it. They didn't do it. At least in the credits, you got to do it. Do a who's that po? You got to. <sighs> You're missing opportunities here, Hollywood. That's what you're supposed to do. But yeah, let me know what you thought of the movie. Let me know if you have the same problems as me. And as always, guys, appreciate you watching. You can catch me at Black e Cool on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. Of course, here on YouTube. Hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel and you like the video. Hit the like, vi like button if you like the video as well. Share the video and share the channel. Helps the channel grow. We're trying to get up to 100. We're real close. We're about about. 55 subscribers so let's go ahead let's go guys we can do it we get up to 100 appreciate that and as always guys appreciate you watching and i'll see you guys oh oh i forgot i got i got merch now well i got shirts so um i'm gonna have a link in the description but if you use the code i'm gonna put it up here because i'm probably gonna forget i think it's g no it's not g it's it's black it's BGC84. If you use those at checkout, you get like $5 off uh, the t-shirts. Uh, right now, I have like two designs up there. I'm working on more. So let me know if you like it. Let me know what you think. And go get one. Yeah, appreciate it, guys. All right, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in my next video.